Hey y'all, welcome back to Camel and Plaid. I'm David and I thank you for joining us today. I wanted to just talk to you about winter driving conditions. Since we're in October, I thought this would be a good time for that. A little background on me. I spent 14 and a half years working for the Highway Patrol. And so in that time, I dealt with a fair number of people who got themselves in places they probably didn't need to be and didn't have the things that they needed. So I was hoping just to help us all out by giving some ideas of things you might want to check as this season is entered. To start with, we need to check our battery. The summer months are hard on batteries and can deplete their ability to cold start. So take it down to your local auto parts store, have them run a check on your battery, make sure that it's capable of cold starting well, um, it's functioning properly, has the right amount of voltage. Uh, the next thing we want to do is Take our tires to our local um, tire shop, or if you have a Costco near you, someone who has the ability to fill your tires with nitrogen. Nitrogen doesn't, uh, is not affected by cold as much as just standard air is, and so it will hold better tire pressure, and you want your tires to be full for, the, for winter driving. Um, the next thing we wanna do is kinda just prepare for the possibility of getting stuck. And some of you are probably thinking to yourself, I don't live anywhere near snow. But here's the thing, when we travel and we traverse things uh, to a different location, we run the risk of going over passes and the passes are of course higher in altitude and have a higher likeliness of snow. And what happens is we're not prepared for it because it's not a normal portion of our driving. And then we get stuck in the snow, we don't have the things that we need. Just about every year we hear about some family that um, goes out, gets stuck on a road that they probably shouldn't have been driving on in the first place, um, following after their GPS because it told them, hey, the other roads are closed, but this one's still open. And so we just wanna do as much as we can to help ourselves out. And so the first thing I would tell you is one, if you do get into a position where you say crash your car in the snow or the snow gets too deep for you to keep driving and you're forced to pull over, the first thing you want to do is stay with the car as long as the car is not completely blocking a, an active roadway. Most people who die in storms, it's because they try and go out in the storm without the proper gear and uh, they end up freezing to death. So don't do that. All right. My first suggestion is for you to build a bag or um, add some items to your car, which you can probably find around your house, but if not, I'm gonna show you a couple of options that are fairly inexpensive um, that I would buy and just leave in the car and leave them there until winter's over. And for the most part, most of these items are items that probably should just stay in your car anyways, just in case you break down somewhere and you need a little bit to help yourself out. The first thing I'm gonna tell you is water, right? Water is an important item, we all need it. I would suggest you buy a water bottle one specifically that has a filter. Uh, and again, you're just gonna leave this in the car. That way, if you do, for some reason, get stuck somewhere and nobody is able to get to help you, you can always just fill it with snow. As it melts, you already have your filter ready to go and you can drink directly from it. Of course, my suggestion is that you just have water available. So buy a one gallon of water, find one with a heavy gauge plastic that'll be able to sustain uh, freezing and thawing over and over again. And so find yourself a heavy one and just put it in the car so you always have at least a gallon of water to get you started. The next thing I would suggest is jumper cables. Put some jumper cables in your car. That way if somebody passes by and say you have an electrical issue, your battery is drained or something of that nature, you can have them jump you, you'll be back on your way. Then I would suggest multiple light sources. So a couple of AAA battery flashlights would be my first suggestion. Um, you can buy all kinds of different ones, but there's simple kits like this that come from Cabela's uh, that already have your little flashlight. They have the next item I would suggest, have some type of a cutting tool uh, in case you need to uh, cut open packaging for uh, your chains, if you need to uh, cut yourself out of a seat belt. Of course, that's gonna be a little bit more difficult if it's inside this container in the back of your car. But 
a cutting tool is a good option. In the line of cutting tool, I would generally suggest that you buy yourself at least one fixed blade knife, something like the Mora knives, which are fairly inexpensive. I think I got these for $9 off of Amazon, but they're a fairly well-built knife um, and they're inexpensive. So you'll just leave that in your car and have that cutting tool when the time comes. Um, again, multiple light sources. So not just one flashlight, but I would actually go on and find yourself a set of bicycle uh, reflecting lights um, that are AA, AAA powered. Of course, buy the batteries to go with it. And again, just leave them there. Don't break into them every time you need a battery. Just go to the store, buy yourself some other batteries if that's what you need to do. Leave these there and get one that has like a magnetic back that you can put on your car, preferably one with red lights and maybe one with red lights that flash. I bought some of these for $10 off of Amazon and you get two of them. And so you can put one on the back, one on the front. That way if you crash, you're able to be located. I would put one probably towards the top of your car, but visible from tra for traffic from both directions. So that way, even as a snow plow or maybe a, a larger vehicle like a semi, they can see you from greater distances and you're less likely to get crashed into. A lot of times the injuries that come to people are secondary crashes. So they got into an initial crash and then somebody else was not paying attention and then they crash into them. Uh, and that's of course devastating. So that's my suggestion. So, so far we have water, jumper cables, uh, multiple light sources and a cutting tool. The next thing I would tell you to do is buy extra clothing, right? Um, an extra jacket that you already have. If you're not wearing it, even if it's an older, smaller jacket, put it in there. If it, as long as you can get your arms in there and wrap it around your body, it doesn't have to look good. You just need it to keep you warm. Um, buy an extra set of pants, a long sleeve shirt, and some socks and an extra pair of shoes. You want all these just in case you get soaked in the middle of that storm. The next thing I would suggest is a sleeping bag. And I would also suggest you get blankets, but a sleeping bag in particular, because um, generally they roll up a little bit smaller. Now, the one I'm about to show you is an inexpensive one. I picked it up at Walmart, but it's good to 35 degrees. And yes, winter conditions are usually colder than that, but your car does provide you some warmth. And then the clothing that you have will do so as well. And this is inexpensive, so it's not something that you're worried about because you spent so much money on it that you want it inside the house. So $20, this one's good, down to 35 degrees. Um, it packs up. It is not necessarily small, but it's also not the biggest sleeping bag, which is why I think it's the right option. Simply because 20 bucks, you leave it, you forget it, and uh, it doesn't take up so much room that you're always complaining about the fact that it's there. Uh, the next thing, again, blankets. And Walmart, again, I got these for $2.50, I think, when I picked them up. Usually it's post-season that you're going to find that, but I think the standard price on these is somewhere between $3.85 and $5. And you can get them shipped to your house. If you spend over $25, generally it's free. So I get these. These are ones that literally came out of my car. I just pulled them out. Same thing with the sleeping bag. It's always there. These will help you stay warm. You can put them up over your head. You got camo and plaid, which everybody needs. And so those are just some inexpensive options that I think are a great uh, item for you. The next thing is food. Yes, you don't plan on being there that long. I agree. But to keep you from getting hangry and doing things that are not wise, I would suggest you buy some food. One of the cheapest, easiest staples to put in your car that, you, again, you're not going to be worried about, you may run into the issue of digging into it, is Pop-Tarts. And the Walmart Pop-Tarts usually run nowadays about buck seventy-five. I'm sure by the time uh, <laughs> you may see this, it could be $5, but they're not that expensive. One 12 pack of these is 1200 calories and they're broken up, all right? You get, you get 12 of these, excuse me, are 2400 calories. And so it's a lot of calories condensed into one package, right? And so that's important. Again, what are we doing? We're just trying to stay alive. We're trying to keep our heads straight and clear. And so giving ourselves another option to help with that, as far as food is concerned, is I think a great and wise thing to do. Again, these will sit in your car. They're not all that affected by temperature and 
it's a buck 75. It'll give you at least enough calories for a day or two and until you get rescued. All right. Um, the next thing I would suggest is uh, just a spare battery for your cell phone, right? And we live in the age of fairly inexpensive uh, lithium batteries. Usually you can buy like a 10,000 uh, mega amp hour um, battery for, you know, 10, 20 bucks. So have one of those, buy a spare plug for your phone specifically and leave it in there. Again, we don't want to just break into this whenever we forget our thing. We want our, our uh, wire. We want to save this for that actual emergency. So put it in there, leave it and forget it. Make sure that the battery is charged. Uh, you will deal with some issues of the cold, right? Um, and so the simplest thing to do with the battery is once you get it out, when you need to use it, put it against your body so that it heats up to the temperature it needs to, to function properly and charge your phone. And that way, if your phone has died in the midst of all this stuff, you're already having a bad day, you have this ability to um, hopefully call for assistance. All right, so that was j just my other suggestion. And then take all of it and put it in a backpack and leave it there. So sleeping bag, backpack with all your stuff in it, you're ready to go no matter what happens. Um, the last thing that I would suggest is just think about maybe buying some of the zip tie type chains uh, they are simple. They're like one time single use. You zip tie them to your tires. They can help you to get unstuck in case you end up in a place that, again, you weren't prepared for, but now you at least have a means to give yourself some more traction. Hopefully you can get yourself out, right? We always want you to self rescue whenever possible and not have to rely on other people. But we also want you to have that ability, which is why we have the cell phone charger and battery in case that happens. Just think over what you might need. I've given you some suggestions. These are things that I've seen uh, that have been helpful for other people, or at least would have been if they had put them inside their vehicles beforehand. And take the time to be prepared and um, have as much fuel <laughs> as possible. Don't drive past the fuel station if you're in the middle of nowhere and you don't actually know where you're going. All right, those are just my suggestions. I appreciate you hearing what I have to say. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. I'd be more than happy to uh, make a further video on anything that you think is important. Thank you guys.